Welcome back to Brush Up Your Game, and today, a re-review of Wave 4's USS Voyager. Now, I know, I know, I know, this ship, very difficult to get a hold of, at least right now. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I, there's a reprint, I think, down the road, or at least a new version of Voyager. We will see. Um, that's my hope. But, I, I would not be doing... Uh, you all justice if I did not at least address Voyager. So, uh, here we go. The Intrepid class, a 4245, uh, one of the rare Federation ships with two defense dice and a really good attack value. Uh, we've seen two defense dice on like two or maybe even three attack, but to get four attack and two defense, th this is a somewhat durable ship, plus nine durability. It's a nice trade here. Uh, three crew slots, a weapon, and a tech slot. You're going to make some stuff happen. Uh, Voyager, nice stat bar, uh, before we even get to the named ability here. Instead of making a normal attack with your primary weapon, you may fire in any direction, air range one to two, with four attack dice. So you're not losing anything off of your primary here. You're getting your full primary weapon, air range one to two. 360. That's pretty good. Now, if you do so, you place an Ox Power Token beside your ship. You're a little predictable. And if you look at the maneuver dial on the Intrepid, while it's all white or green, notice the lack of a one straight. Um, that means to get a green, to clear the Ox for doing 360 fire. You're doing a two or three straight or a one bank. Now, uh, the most common way to uh, to enhance this ability, to combo with the, this ability, is Chekhov from Reliant. And uh, let's see if we can find Chekhov here real quick. Uh, Chekhov, you can remove one auxiliary power token after performing a white maneuver. You, you know, we combo that with uh, this here dial and you go oh so after any maneuver i get to remove an ox yeah yeah that was that was the very uh the very standard combo um i don't love the intrepid uh, maneuver dial i don't hate it but there are times you want to go slow times you want to just do a one straight and you find yourself going uh i guess i'll take a two straight Maybe a one bank. Uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's a rough trade-off. Um, moving on, the generic 28 points. Yeah, the Intrepid class is one of the ships that still needs a recosting. Um, if we go and look at spuds, uh, let me pull up spuds here on a, on a different window, uh, but the Intrepid, uh, just the generic Intrepid, it's down at 24. So a bit of a discount, Voyager at 28. So a little bit of a discount, not a huge one. Uh, two crew slots, weapon tech, it's a nice generic. Uh, it's a nice enough generic. I ran it in Alliance for a good long time and I think I will continue to run it in Alliance. Uh, although I think I'm now up to a sovereign. So, uh, but yeah, the, the intrepid definitely good for a lot of, uh, a lot of the time through Alliance, uh, captain Janeway, Catherine Janeway, and you would figure she would be good when your ship performs an evade scan or tar or battle station, sorry, evade scan or battle station action. You may place an additional token of the appropriate type beside your ship. If you do so place an ox power token beside your ship. I argue she's not very good in combo with Voyager because then you have two ox power tokens and you're not getting an action the next round. Uh, where she is amazing is on the original Enterprise. The USS Enterprise can perform an action listed on its action bar while it has an auxiliary power token. So, you know, you, you don't ever care. You, you get to just double up your actions, yeah. Uh, and she's good that way. It, this is weird that Voyager has synergy with Chekhov and Janeway has synergy going on the Enterprise. Yeah, 
Um, use her carefully. I do think she has some nice play on some Vulcan ships with the double scans. Uh, double evade can certainly be a combo. Uh, double battle station is probably the most frequent uh, used. Uh, would not be bad on like the Sao Paulo because you keep battle stations and then you still have battle stations for not one but two defense roles. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like Janeway. I don't love Janeway, but I like her. Um, she, she does have a fair amount of utility. Uh, Chakotay is another captain. Uh, skill five, three points, no talent slot. And I think that hurts him and is underserving to him. Instead of performing a normal action, you may disable Chakote to allow two different crew upgrades to perform their actions during the same round. Uh, yeah, it, it's... Uh, really, nowadays, he would probably say action, disable Chakote. Two different crew upgrades can perform their actions. Uh, yeah, so he's a trade-off. Now he's good, but then he's disabled, so you're you're attacking at skill one. I feel like under time tokens, he'd be a better version. And uh, yeah, as it is, he is one of the worst captains, and I don't think I've ever seen anyone run him for any reason. Uh, Tim Waters becomes a better uh, captain that lets you do similar ideas without quite the same effect but yeah and it's sad when a bratty uh arrogant captain of the valiant who was in one episode is better than the first officer of an entire series a uh, sacrifice five point elite talent unique uh, before rolling the dice during an attack or defense, you may discard this upgrade and disable your captain in order to choose the results of two dice. These dice cannot be re-rolled for the remainder of this attack by you or your opponent. Uh, I... Sacrifice can work uh, with some weapons like uh klingon weapons that let crits go through to the hole uh it, short of that this this is just a bad talent uh and even then you're just paying more for it, it it's a one-time use this uh with time tokens again would be better uh I know it came out before time tokens. I, I guess that's my, my, eh, well, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, sacrifice just um, hurts because, you know, it could have been really good. It wasn't, but it could have been. Transphasic torpedoes and 10 attack dice for 10 points. Yeah. Uh, attack target lock, spin your target lock, discard this card perform this attack you can fire this weapon from your forward or rear firing arcs you can only buy it for voyager you get to shoot at range two to three and that's pretty cool uh it's 10 dice um yeah i i like transphasics it's really fun to chuck that many dice but boy is it uh, expensive and a huge gamble and you got to hope your opponent does not have any attack cancellation or you got to have ways to deal with the attack cancellation and you got to hit them early with this there's so many qualifiers to transphasics i think they work really well against borg uh, i i think they uh they work nicely in scenario play but in uh overall games nah. Photon torpedoes, uh, these, again, these are just the bad versions of them. So, kindling, goodbye, moving on. Ablative generator. And I probably should have done this a while back. 
so that cards were actually readable here. Ablative Generator, another 10-point card. You can tell somebody was a fan of in-game or just drawing inspiration from in-game because that's where these cards are coming from. Ablative Generator, action, place or remove the Ablative Generator token beside your ship. This upgrade can only be purchased for Voyager. Well, what does the Ablative Generator token do? Let's go find it. It's either here at the end. Here we go. This card serves as the rules for the Ablative Generator token. A ship with the AGT assigned to it follows the special rules. Uh, you can't cloak. Uh, disable all your remaining shields. Remove its cloak token. Uh, while the ship has... Yeah, the AGT can't raise its shields or cloak. Convert all crits to hits, which is kind of nice. Place all damage cards that the ship receives beneath the Ablative Generator card. If the player removes the AGT from beside the ship, the damage cards remain beneath the Ablative Generator. Once the, AG the Ablative Generator receives five damage cards, discard the upgrade card and all five damage cards, and then remove the AGT from beside this ship. All excess damage affects the ship as normal. Meaning, meaning, if you had shields, they don't come back. You're taking whole damage instantly. Um... Uh, I get that there's a thematicism to it, but boy, the fact that you have to take an action on a 10 point card, you lose your shields. It sucks. This could be totally redone. And this card just to exist, it, it's like a blade of whole armor. And that's what it should have been. Um, but it should just be five extra durability is really what this is so yeah anyway uh bio neural circuitry after you roll the dice for any reason you must disable sorry you may you may disable this upgrade to re-roll the dice you must re-roll all of the dice and keep the results of the second roll so do you want a worse tactical officer but it functions as tech I guess, but it's five points. Doesn't make sense. Should have been choice of dice. Should have been a lot of things. I can't justify bio neural circuitry. This doesn't make sense. It doesn't make thematic sense. There, there's nothing redeeming about this card, and we're moving on. Seven of nine. Uh, action disable. Ugh. To place one adaptation token on any tech upgrade on an enemy ship within range 1 to 2. And of course you can't use this against species 8472. Because thematics. So I like that already. What does an adaptation token do? While you have it, 7 of 9 ship is now considered to also possess that tech upgrade, even if 7 is disabled. The original upgrade card is unaffected, can be used freely by its owner. If the original upgrade is disabled or discarded, 7's... Ship is still considered to possess that tech upgrade and can freely use it. If using the tech upgrade would normally require the upgrade to be dis disabled or discarded, when 7 ship uses the upgrade, remove the adaptation token. The original upgrade is unaffected. Only one adaptation token may be in play at the same time. If 7 of 9 uses her ability on another tech upgrade, remove the adaptation token from the previous upgrade. And if seven is discarded, discard the adaptation token. So what does this basically mean? She copies a tech. Uh, and she gets to use your tech as if it was her tech. Ultimately, I like this. Um, but it's so dependent on what my opponent brings. It, it's intriguing. Uh, and I think the, the best use of it now is Romulan cloaking device. Um, because you get cloak. You don't get anything else. Um, if this was on, if you put seven on uh, a Romulan ship or a Klingon ship, then you get your bank echoes. But, you know, she can also copy uh, interface generator. She could discard, or she could copy cloaked mines. Of course, those are going to be uh, dropped before she gets in range. Um, there, There's uses here. 
And I, I, I find her intriguing. I, I think there's enough good tech out there. Stone of Gaul. Um, yeah, there's enough interesting and good tech that she has a use. And the only time you need to re-enable her is if you want to use her again. She's pricey. She's very pricey. But I do think she's good. Tuvok. When firing a secondary weapon, you may disable Tuvok to roll one extra attack die. Why, for five points, is that any good? Passive ability, at the very least. But yeah. Anyway. Uh, we're moving past Tuvok. But Lana. Uh, add one additional weapon icon and one additional tech icon to your ship's upgrade bar. Balana for a long time was really good because these were some of the best ways to get slots. Uh, it's, it's not that they were the only way, but they were really good ways to get slots on dreadnought ships. You, you got to remember there didn't used to be a point limit to the game per ship. Uh, so you you were okay paying four points to get a couple of extra slots to keep loading up your ship. Nowadays, eh, I, I think there's, there's better ways. There's cargo hold, repurpose cargo hold, uh, etc. And, and you're going to go that route. Harry Kim, action, disabled Harry to repair one shield, four points. He's overpriced. Tom Paris, when defending your ship rolls one extra defense die. Hey, at least he's passive uh, and he was good. You were willing to pay that, but then Hood Riker came out and he was less expensive. He was a super set of Tom Paris. He did more and he cost less. Uh, the doctor is question mark. Uh, he's either a crew or a tech upgrade, your choice. Action, remove all disable upgrade tokens from your crew upgrades. Which is nice, considering how many disables exist in this pack. Uh, you, you almost feel like you need the doctor. And, uh, the doctor does make me feel better about much of this pack. But it's a stopgap. And I don't think that that alone fixes the issues with this pack. It's nice that there's something to address. The doctor does enable all kinds of combos. And I'm happy about that. But really, he's either the tech on like a two, really a three crew ship. Or he's a crew on a three to four crew ship. It's a, he, he has limited uses to really enable the, the crazy crew shenanigans that you need him to. Uh, but yeah, uh, Voyager good pack. Good ship. I will say that. Good ship, Janeway's good, I think 7 is still useful, but short of that, th this pack, if it wasn't named USS Voyager, I don't think most people would actually want it. it it's the, the abilities here are overhyped. They're not fantastic. And... It's been a long time since I've seen people use any of these cards competitively. They're fun. They're thematic. But short of that, there's not a whole lot there. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Till next time, keep rushing up your game. Take care.